Hi, my name's Matt. Okay, today I'm checking the throttle position sensor on this car. There's three wires going to it. I'll show you how to check it. Okay, throttle position sensor, if you still have one on a car, because most cars use the accelerator pedal position. But we've got the throttle linkage with the cable. Coming up here, the cable comes in. And there's your throttle, right there. So it's going to be the other side of the shaft down there where we see the wires has the throttle position sensor. You can't see it with this. It's right down there. This bit at the top is not it. That's the IAC, idle air control valve. It's just underneath that on this car. Here's the air intake going into the throttle body. So you'll see it's always at the end of the shaft where it swivels. So there's three wires, as you can see, down there. So I couldn't get a probe in because there's not enough room to back probe it. So with this car, I've just pissed the wire. If we look here, I've got the multimeter set up to negative. And the scope, the scope, well, the, the multimeter is 18 millivolts. So that's n almost nothing. So I'm taking out that that's the ground. So the next one along, after the pink wire, I've just moved it to the white wire. And that gave me 5 volts, constant 5 volts. Well, 4.96 is close to 5 though. So that's definitely going to be the 5 volt reference. Or the 5 volt supply, depending on what you want to call it. Last one out of the three. So without a wiring diagram, you know when you've got 0 on one, 5 on the other, and the last one's a signal, you know which wire's which. This is giving us 5 volts. No, I'll say that again, it's giving us 0.5 volts, which is half a volt. And if I slowly open this, what I'm doing is working the throttle with my hand. It's going up to about 3.8 volts and back down. All I was doing was moving the throttle. Okay, now I've changed it from a, a multimeter, which most people might have, to a scope. Just uh, doing the same thing here. We'll see the line move up. Gradually going up. I've actually got my scale so slow there that it looks like a flat line. But that's good because I'd really be able to see a dropout doing that. I can change my time scale. Milliseconds. I'm going to change it. I don't know if you can see it because of the glare on the screen. I've changed it to half a second per division. So now when I snap it open and lower it, it's gone off the screen, but you see it catching up on the other bit. So I'm opening it and closing it. Another thing to do is quickly snap it, quickly drop it and see if it, if it falls below there. That's another test to check everything's okay. This one's fine, although it's only going up to... I can't actually read that through the scope. That's one, two, three, four. That's four squares. One, two, three, four. Yeah, just above the cross. I really don't know if you can see it on here. Right. So why did I show you the position sensor today that was just because that's an easy one to show you and one of the first ones that a lot of people learn so a lot of other things once you've learned that that the, the range on these 5 volt systems these sensors it's between 0.5 a volt and 4.5 volts it doesn't go from 0 to 5 usually because that would if it was at 0 or 5 it could indicate a short circuit or an open circuit to the ECU so it deliberately puts the range of 0.5 to 4.5 volts. The other things that we've got is once you've learned that EGR position sensors if your EGR is fitted with one works in a similar way with the voltage range uh, so does the fuel rail pressure uh, same thing 5 volt systems any 5 volt sensor can work in a similar way particulate filter pressure sensor that's kind of the same thing where you see it I've got mass airflow here and absolute 
uh, manifold absolute pressure sensor, they can work in the same way, although there are digital types which won't look like that. They'll just look like two and a half volts all the time if you're using a multimeter. If you're using the scope, you'll see a difference in the duty cycle, which I'll come into in a different video. But you'd know as soon as you plug it in, if it's two and a half volts, it's digital. So that, that wouldn't work for that. But you could look for a change in hertz if you have hertz on your multimeter, switch your multimeter to hertz and you'll see something change there. So you could have put your ignition on and see what you get so there's absolutely no vacuum and start your car and let it idle so it's maximum volumes, maximum vacuum I mean and see what the difference is between the two and there will be specifications that you could compare it to. Uh, and also the intake runner is 5 volt system on engines and you also find a similar system on suspensions that use the you know the leveling suspensions for, and for the headlights stuff like that that's combined with it um so that's why i've shown you one sensor but it can work with other ideas how you can back probe to find out make a note of which wires which figure out which one's your signal wire and you see if it's working you know you make so if it was air you would have it you could check the signal wire ignition on you could then have the engine idling and then you could put it at 2000 rpm or snap the throttle so it's going to go up as high as possible to compare it there's ways that you can make these things work in the same way that we could manually open and close the throttle we can just make stuff work and see if we're getting a response so that's why I'm showing you one sensor. I didn't go into them all, but it was just an idea to show you how to do it without a wiring diagram. And thanks for watching. I hope you found some of it helpful.